Hello everyone, Hussein here. Welcome to another motion design tutorial using Unreal Engine 5.4. While I was browsing and looking at the Unreal Engine public road map over here, I came across this motion graphics image here. It shows some cylinders inside the cylinder, inside the cylinder. And I was wondering if I can make it in Unreal Engine 5.4. This is what I came up with. Now, I would like to show to you how I did this. We're going to be using multiple cloners and multiple effectors. Before we start, there's a couple of things that you have to do. Number one is, of course, you need to enable the modeling plugin. Go to the settings up here, go to plugins and just type modeling. You will see this modeling editor mode here. Enable that. And of course, you need to enable the motion design plugin as well. What the plan is now is actually to create these cylinders and we will do it right inside of Unreal Engine. If you are not comfortable with modeling in Unreal Engine, you can always use a 3D modeling software of your preference. If you do that, you can probably jump to the next section. Okay, so in this section, we are going to create the cylinders. Let's start doing that. Create a new level, file, new level. Choose the basic level over here. Jump into the modeling section. Click on create the cylinder and just bring your mouse anywhere in the viewport over here just click once and then i'm going to center the whole thing again zero 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 at the moment it's at a height of 200 units and then radius of 50 maybe we take it to 60 over here the radius slices if i don't increase that you will see this jaggedness at the sides of the cylinder we're going to make that to 64 make it a bit smoother click on accept the next thing is we're going to create a hole inside this cylinder we're going to use a select cylinder here we go to model we're going to go to polygroup edit select the top of the cylinder and then we're going to use inset click on inset and then we can just start moving the mouse you can see that you can actually create that inset over here something like that and then the insets are done click on accept now we're going to push the middle one inside with that i'm going to go ahead and grab the model again click on polygroup edit again i'm going to select that part i'm going to do the push pull i'm just going to push it down you can see the mouse is actually helping us to push it all the way down with somewhere like that we won't be seeing inside the cylinder so it's going to be fine click on accept so we got a nice cylinder here with a hole but uh, it'll be nice to smoothen out the edges over here so for that we're going to use the bevel select the model again select the model icon over here go back into polygroup edit we're going to select this edge over here hold on the shift key select the other edge click on bevel and you have a choice of changing the bevel distance subdivisions and round weight so bevel distance maybe we can make it up to something like 0.5 i'll probably give it a six division because we're going to try and make it as smooth as possible and i'm going to accept the action i'm going to click on accept again now we've got a nice rounded edge and if you notice the uv maps are all messed up at the moment so what we're going to do is we're going to select the object again we're going to go to uvs use the project uvs select the cylinder projection type click on accept so now the uv maps are going to be done correctly it's not going to be an important thing for us to do uv map but just in case you want to put some nice textures on it so that's how we create the cylinder so let's go back to the selection mode and i'm going to select the outliner here it's called a cylinder so i'm going to make a new folder just for this cylinder over here so right click new folder call this motion design cylinders and i like to also give it a color so i can visually see it i'm going to give it this nice green color open that up when you make a model inside using the modeling tool it's not going to be visible to you anywhere so the way to find it in your content over here go down to the cylinder details panel and look for it here cylinder it has a name here three two b blah 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 but i'm going to click on the folder icon and i'm going to copy that out into my own folder grab that and put it into our md cylinders folder and i'm going to say copy here I'm going to rename that sm underscore cylinder one and that's it that's how we model the cylinder and in the next section we're going to start cloning this cylinder okay before we start just want to remind you to save your project in my case i've called it md cylinders and i've put it into my md cylinders folder over here so if you see an asterisk you might as well just save it all right so let's move on so we have a cylinder in our scene over here we want to now duplicate the cylinder so we have three cylinders and i'm going to rename them appropriately so for the first cylinder i'm going to call this is going to be the larger cylinder so i'm going to click on f2 call it cylinder underscore big and we're going to go for big medium small duplicate that Control d call this cylinder medium 
naming will be very important in this project. Press Control D again and call this cylinder small. All right, so let's change the size for these three so we can see them. The moment they're just overlapping each other, I'm going to click on medium. The cylinder big is actually at 1.0. I'm going to select the cylinder medium. I want to change to maybe 0.8. Let's see whether it fits. 0.8 inside there. We can see that. I'm going to just move it up. It fits perfectly. Very nice. I'm going to use the small version. Change it to, let's try 0.6. Okay, and let's bring it up. There we go. We've got three cylinders there. Perfect. So I'm going to now start cloning them. I'm going to just going to quickly save. Control S. Let's jump into the motion design UI by clicking this button over here. I'm going to move this panel which is sitting over here. I'm just going to click on the small little blue arrow there. I'm going to drag motion design to this side. So I have a bigger space to work with. I'm going to make sure that we have motion design enabled here. And let's start organizing the motion design panel over here. Select volumetric cloud. And I'm going to put all this into their own group. So I'm going to press Control G. Get null actor zero. I'm going to just call this lighting. I'm going to collapse that. And we don't need the floor actually here. So I'm going to just select the floor and delete. We're going to clone the, the big cylinder first. And then we're going to put the rest of them inside one by one. So in the actors icon over here, I'm going to go and grab the cloner actor. Click once and click once in the viewport. Go to the details of the cloner. Reset its location and rotation. Here we go. Take the cylinder big and dump it into cloner 2. You'll get some weird stuff. Remove the default cube. We don't need that anymore. It will give you a warning, just say yes. And I'm going to rename this cloner. Just say cloner for now. We're going to rename it something else in a bit. So now we have the big uh, cylinders. They're stacking on each other. So select the cloner and move into its details panel down here. Just scroll all the way down. So for the count X under layout, count X we leave at 3, count Y with 3, count Z we're going to change to 0. We don't need it in Z. And I'm going to change the grid to something called the honeycomb. So we have something like that and we need to change its spacing here to click and drag until I get something which I like. In this case will be, let's try 110 for this and then 120 for the height spacing. Okay, that looks good for now. I'm going to disable these two guys first, the medium and the small, just by clicking the eyeball. All right, looks good. And now we can actually drop in the other ones, right? So I'm going to now open up the medium. I'm going to drop the medium into the cloner as well. And I'm going to make the medium the child of the big. So if I click and drag onto the, the cylinder big, you can see now it's text like that, right? I'm going to disable the, the cylinder medium. So now you can see that they are uh, the medium is sitting inside the big as well. I'm going to do the same thing for cylinder small. Open up the eye, go to cylinder small and drop it on the cylinder medium. So it becomes the child of the cylinder medium. Might have to change the scaling though. Scale it up maybe 2.6 and then we'll bring it up. So that's it. So we got a cloner. And then we have the cylinder big, cylinder medium, and then the small is a child of cylinder medium. So we got all of them inside there. Select the cloner again. Now we go back to the details, increase the count here to maybe 50 by 50. So be careful when you're doing this on your own PC. If you have a slightly lower end PC, you might be want to be careful with this because this one might take a bit of, of your resources. So maybe you want to start with 20 or something. In the next session, I'm going to show you how to put in the materials. For all the materials, I'm suggesting that we use materials from the marketplace and it's called the automotive materials. So go to the marketplace and type in automotive materials. You will come to this pack over here. Just click on it. In your case, probably will be something like add to launcher or something. In my case, it's add to project. And if you notice that the this pack is not compatible with 5.4, but it works just the same. Click on add to project. Choose your project. In my case, it's going to be motion design. Uh, you might want to check on the show all of projects and click on motion design and add to project. I have done for mine, so I'm not going to worry about that. Select the project and then you will see that they have some incompatibility with version 5.4. But just select 5.4 anyway and then click on add to project. And once you've done that, you should see a folder in your content browser, which is named automotive materials. I've given a color to my folder that I'm going to be using, which is the materials folder. Double click on it. Then you will see that you have exterior, interior and texture. So in this case, it will be useful for you to use the filter here. So I've enabled some filters and I'm going to enable my material instance filters. Now you can see you, so you have choices of a lot of materials that you can use in your project. In my case, I'm going to add a gray shader to the bigger cylinder, orangey or yellowish to the medium. And then I'm going to put a blue one to that. In your motion design 
panel, select the small cylinder and you have access to its materials over here. I'm going to just click and drag the MI Car Paint Light Blue material onto this. And for the medium, I'm going to choose the MI Car Paint Orange. For the big cylinder, I'm going to choose this MI Metal Frosted. Click and drag. Um, you can be as creative as you want, but I'll stick to my grey, orange and blue. In the next session, we're going to start adding the effectors so the cylinders can move up and down. Make sure that you have saved your project. In your motion design panel, select the cloner and then scroll down. You'll see something called spawn linked effector. So we're going to click on that and we will have an effector in our project. I'm going to start renaming them straight away, B-I-G. So effector big, which is controlling the cloner here. Select the effector now, scroll down, change the type to unbound. Scroll down even further, we're going to change the mode to noise field. And in the location strength, I'm just going to put maybe one for now. We're going to tweak this as we go along. And then under the pan for the Z value, I'm going to put to three. And for the frequency, I'm going to put it at three. Okay, and you can start seeing the cylinders moving up and down. To control the intensity of the movement, you can actually control the location strength over here. Let's say put five, then you can see that it's going up and down even further. Or we can put 10. So let's leave it at uh, one for now because we're going to definitely tweak this as we go along. So that's one done. So now you can see everything is moving. Everything looks good. How do we now move the medium and the small one? So this is what we need to do. I'm going to rename this cloner underscore BIG, which means this cloner is going to be using effector big to move the uh, big cylinders. Duplicate now the cloner big, control D. Rename this cloner now to cloner medium. We're going to remove cloner big from here. Okay, be careful because they are actually in um, in a parented situation. If you delete the big one, you might delete the other one. What I suggest you to do is select the medium and the small, make the child of the medium, and then now you can delete the big. And then we're going to do the same thing again. We're now going to duplicate cloner again, control D. And this time around, I'm going to rename it to cloner small, which means now we have to remove the medium and put a small. So I'm going to make the cylinder small, a, a child of the cloner small, and I'm going to remove medium out of that. Each cloner will have only one static mesh, which is cloner small will have a cylinder small. I'm going to rename that cloner medium. I'm going to only have one, which is supposed to be medium. I'm going to delete cylinder small. I'm going to rename that to medium. And then we have cloner big and also should have only one. So I'm going to remove medium and small at the same time. Okay, now we have cylinder big has a cloner big and we have medium and small. All right, so let's not worry about the positions of the cylinders. Let's start cloning the effector as well. So in this case, this effector big is actually controlling the cloner big, right? Because it's assigned there. If I select the cloner big here, you can see we have effector big assigned to this uh, cloner. I'm going to duplicate this two more times. So I'm going to press Control D and I'm going to rename that to effector medium. I'm going to duplicate one more time, Control D, and I'm going to call this effector small. So each of them will have their own effectors affecting them. So inside cloner medium, I'm going to go scroll down and change this to effector medium. And inside cloner small, I'm going to change the effector to effector small. Double check again, we have we have cloner big, which is being affected by effector big. Cloner medium, which is affected by effector medium. Cloner small, it being affected by effector small. And now we can start tweaking the properties for the effectors. So in my case, for effector small, in the location strength, I put 25. For effector medium, I've set to 10. And for effector big, I set to 30. So you may tweak it as you like. So the next session, we're going to start adding the camera. All right, let's start adding the camera and then we will tweak a bit of the lighting. I'm going to go and grab the camera. I'm going to just go back to default view. And I'm going to use this pre-port menu. I'm going to go and grab a camera. I'm going to create a scene camera. See, I have a scene camera in the motion design panel. I'm going to just call it Cam1 and drag it into the sequencer. Okay, I'm going to just drop in a transform there, drop in a keyframe. And I'm going to start moving the camera in a situation where I like to see the view, point of view. Okay, let's put it something like that for now. And I'm going to use the transform to actually rotate it on the roll. Something like that. I like this view over here. Go and change the camera component. Change the current current focal length. Okay, perhaps we move the camera a bit more to the back. Uh, I'm going to select the camera here. I'm going to go to its focus settings. I'm going to enable the deb draw debug focus. I'm going to change that to somewhere in the middle. 
And of course, you can go and start tweaking the effect again. I see less of the blue and the and the orange here. I can just play around with these numbers here. So this is how you do it, or using multiple cloners with multiple effectors to make something cool as this. And I'll show you some variations that I've done as well in the next section. The way that we have this thing set up, you can actually drop anything or any static mesh into any of these cloners and then they will take over the objects that you have in your scene here. Let me give an example. So let's go and grab a, a shape. Let's go and grab a sphere. And then I'm going to drop the sphere into the, the smaller cylinder over here, right? So I'm going to grab that and drop it to the cloner small. And obviously it's going to be huge because of the size of the cylinder. I'm going to reset its location. I'm going to bring it down to maybe 0.1. And now if I were to select the cylinders here, I'm going to actually disable this. Let me just remove that. I don't see the spheres yet, but the spheres are there. It's just that they need some settings. So I'm going to go and grab the material that we used earlier for the, the other cylinder. So I'm going to select the sphere here, go and grab and drop the material over here. So now we have the spheres inside there instead of the blue cylinder, which is kind of cool. And if I go and select the, the small effector, I can actually adjust the unit. So maybe make it 2.5 or something. Now you can see the uh, the spheres are actually jumping up and about. So this is cool because you can just now put in any objects into these cloners and they will just appear here. Okay, you can even make them spin. Let me show you another example. So this is another example, what you can do with this setup that I've shown you. I've gone to SketchUp and I've downloaded these Maturishka dolls, also known as the Russian dolls. If you create something with this technique, please tag my name so I can have a look at it. Please like and subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.